So what do honeycombs, mushrooms, and corn husks have in common? They're all ingredients that a New England guitar maker uses to reduce her impact on the environment. Michelle San Miguel of Rhode Island PBS has the story for our arts and culture series, Canvas. Rochelle Rosencrantz had established herself as a furniture maker and an industrial designer, both in her native France and in Rhode Island. But about a decade ago, she decided it was time to explore something new. I missed working with my hands. That was the bottom line. And I started to play music again. So that really like propelled everything. Over the years, Rosencrantz says her own creative process faced some inner struggles. There you go. She felt torn between being a musician and a visual artist and dreamed of combining her two passions. If it wiggles a bit, yeah. Was there a moment when you realized, gosh, I can make a living making guitars? Yes, other people do it, so why not me? And I've been thinking about it for too long to not do it. And no, because it was scary. It's like, it's a drastic change. It was worth the risk, though. Rosencrantz says the environmental impact of making guitars has been well known for decades. Much of the timber comes from old, rare trees that produce good acoustics, like ebony, mahogany, and rosewood. Excessive harvesting of Brazilian rosewood has contributed to its extreme endangerment. It's one of the reasons why she's selective about where she buys her wood. My rosewood is from India. My maple is from the States. My, I have some cedar from Spain. I have some cedar uh, from California. Rosencrantz used her free time during the pandemic to experiment with making instruments from other materials. Take, for instance, the body of her guitars. They're not carved, they're grown. Rosencrantz packs her molds with mushroom spores, as well as organic waste, like corn husk. That whole bag might do the trick. Actually growing a body in mushroom is cheaper than cutting a tree across the world. That's just the bottom line. It looks like a granola bar, but there's kind of a brutalist uh, you know, aesthetic to it. <laughs> the growth of the mushrooms fills any remaining spaces and binds it all together in the shape of the mold. Then, once it's dry, Rosencrantz is left with a solid board. Yeah. Her friend, Mark Miloff, stopped by her studio to try it out. Pretty close. Because it's mushroom, I think of really delicious uh, porcini soup or something like that. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, there's definitely a distinctive sound. It, it is absolutely not a wooden guitar, a wooden resonance. Uh, there's something that is, uh, I find, very pleasing. Rosencrantz not only proved mushroom spores and organic waste can be used to make guitars. So I gave the bees a sandboard to build from. But she also built one from honeycombs. The humming of the bees is within the range of the guitar. It's 309 hertz. That's close to like the A string on a guitar. So I'm like, okay, so that should diffuse a guitar. She knew honeycomb was resonant. She designed a bracing structure and watched as the bees built their comb along it. But then she found herself with a honey-filled guitar that couldn't resonate. So I had to leave it a whole winter but for them to eat because it's cruel to like take, you know, take all their food. They work hard and now they're going to starve. No, I can't do that. So, well, they had food for the winter and they returned in, in uh, early April. I had a... Uh, a perfectly cleaned up guitar that was full, like empty of honey that could resonate. Rosencrantz admits strumming a guitar made from honeycomb isn't practical, but she says it's helped her better understand how biomaterials can diffuse sound. I'm learning so much. As I'm working on one, I start to have like five other ideas. There's so much curiosity that the learning curve is exponential. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Michelle San Miguel in Cranston, Rhode Island.